Welcome to this Hope to Go. Today, I want to talk to you about the truth about God. You know, the Bible is full of case after case in which the power of God is mentioned. God is sovereign. He possesses absolute power. He possesses absolute wisdom. And he possesses absolute authority. Luke 137 says, The angel Gabriel announced to Mary, For with God nothing shall be impossible. I love the psalmist. He said this in the 135th Psalm in the 6th verse. And he declares, Whatever the Lord pleases, he does in heaven and in earth, in the seas and in all the deep places. God's power has been known to level mountains, hold back storms, and command devils and angels. Isaiah the prophet, in, in chapter 66, he says this in the first verse. He said, and this is God speaking, heaven is my throne. Who can say that but God? Earth is my footstool. For all those things my hand has made and all those things exist says the Lord. Who or what can limit God? However, I've discovered three things that God cannot do in my search for the truth about God. And I want to give that to you in this hope to go, this take home truth. Number one, God cannot lie. John 14, 17 says that he is the spirit of truth. And 1 Samuel, the Old Testament, echoes this truth. In the 15th chapter, in the 29th verse, it says, He who is the glory of Israel does not lie. Did you get that? Or change his mind. For he is not a man that he should lie, the son of man that he should change his mind. Since God can't lie, then the wisest man in Proverbs 30 and 5, when he says, Every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. So the big old truth is this. Every promise is true. I love this promise. John 14, 2, it says, In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me. And you will be with me where I am. That's a wonderful promise because God cannot lie. And number two, God cannot change who he is. Malachi, the Old Testament prophet, the last book of the Old Testament declares in the third chapter and the sixth verse, for I am the Lord, I do not change. Now, this world has a certain mindset on what kind of God they want. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I love the disciple that Jesus loved. John, he writes this in 1 John 4 and 7. It shouts, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Did you get that? He doesn't just love you. He is love, and God cannot change who he is. That's his nature. But the final thing is this. God cannot fail. John 11, when Lazarus died, Jesus, a close family friend, felt pain and sorrow over his friend's death. And Martha, Lazarus' sister, said in John 11:21, if you'd have been here, he wouldn't have died. She might as well have just said, it's too late now. It's beyond your ability, Lord, or you didn't get here in time. You failed. Martha simply didn't realize that there is no situation or circumstance or case too hopeless for Jesus. God cannot fail. He never failed Paul and Silas in prison, in the prison house. He never failed Daniel in the lion's den. He never failed the Hebrew boys, those three in the fiery flames of the furnace. God raised Lazarus from the dead, and he'll raise you up no matter what's going on in your life. God has never failed his children. He's an on-time God. Yes, he is. That's the truth about God, and that's your hope to go.